The Elgato Stream Deck Mark II is a must-have accessory for anyone doing live streaming. At its essence, it's a modern-day affordable video switcher, but it really does so much more than that. It's amazing for camera switching or graphic launching for your YouTube or Twitch broadcast, but you can also use this for a plethora of different purposes, from managing your Apple Mail to gaming. From photo editing to really enhancing your next Zoom presentation, it can do it all. Let's go over what the device is, what exactly it can do, and then I'll tell you how I use it in my workflow. Welcome to Sneaky Pete's product reviews. The Elgato Stream Deck Mark II is a compact unit constructed from sturdy plastic, and it's mounted at a fixed angle, which works well on a desk. On the bottom here, it has this grippy pad, and that's gonna help better stick to your desk without slipping around. And then on the back of the Mark II, you get a long 56 inch cable with a standard USB port. This model features a removable faceplate that you can swap out, but I prefer to put a little piece of tape on mine to keep it in place, as I find out it can come out accidentally otherwise. They recommend only plugging this directly into a computer, but I have a MacBook Pro and this is a standard USB port and I only have USB-C ports, so I use mine with the hub and I've had no issues using it like that. On the front here, it has three rows of five buttons and the buttons have a nice tactile feel when you press them. It's really easy to know if you press a button properly, even if you're not looking at your stream deck. Behind each of the 15 buttons is my favorite part and that's this little unique video screen for each button. I imagine it's probably one screen that's separated by software, but regardless, you get to assign an image and text for each of these buttons to really personalize and customize your setup. Keep in mind though, while this has 15 buttons, you can essentially use this to trigger unlimited commands. That's because you can use both multiple pages and folders. So as you can see here, this is gonna take us to page two and I can go page three, page four, and you can make each of these buttons a folder that can have infinite amount of icons in there because you can use multiple pages within your folders. Now that we've described it, let's break it down a little bit. What does a Stream Deck really do? Well, essentially it's a multi-purpose device that was designed to replicate a video switcher for live streaming. You can use it for things like switching between camera angles, switching between scenes, making your broadcast start or end, or triggering graphic, video, or audio elements, depending on what you're doing live. It enables you to have a much more professional broadcast with many less people needing to be involved. A lot of people will find that they can operate their stream deck themselves while they're streaming, while other people are going to want to have a dedicated producer to handle all the video switching elements. You can hook up multiple stream decks to the same computer at the same time. So you can have a stream deck, your producer can have one, everyone can have one, they can all be programmed differently to do different things with their own buttons, icons, and everything. Keep in mind, while this was first designed for live streaming, they have since increased the functionality tenfold. And Elgato has plugins that give you access to a ton of different tools that you can use on your live stream. But these plugins also allow you to utilize your stream decks with additional apps to completely change its core function. When you go to their website and check out the plugins, they have them organized by category, and there are a lot of different plugins. If you're a crypto live streamer, for example, they have different tools to display the current price for your favorite coin. If you have smart lighting in your home, not only can you control that using your stream deck, but you can also implement that within other commands. Like I said, with the welcome sequence, when you press welcome, the lights dim or they go red or they start flashing, whatever you want to do. In the business controls, you can utilize different Apple apps on your stream deck, as well as a Zoom plugin, which makes it much easier to administer a large group meeting. Finally, the Stream Deck can do some insanely cool stuff when you utilize third-party apps like the Adobe Creative Suite, for example. When you're using these, you're gonna have to do some configuration as they're not available on the Elgato store. So you might need to install a few drivers or similar apps to get things connected. But once you do, you can assign all of your Photoshop tools to different keys on your Stream Deck or utilize different transitions or edit types if you're editing video in Adobe Premiere. If you take a look at Stream Deck forums or Reddit, people have even figured out how to integrate these into their video gameplay. And having 15 hotkeys with their own label and icon would certainly be of interest to me if I was a gamer. The thing I utilize my Stream Deck Mark II for is for video live streaming. So I want to give you a quick overview of the Stream Deck software itself, and then show you how I actually integrate this with my live streaming software, which is OBS. Okay, so this is the Stream Deck interface here. As you can see, it has 15 icons, and these correlate to all of the buttons that you see on the Stream Deck itself. As you see here, if I change to a different scene, let's go to Xmas Vape Talk. All the buttons on the Stream Deck change at the same time. You see the labels themselves change as well as the icons. Switch to another one. Now up here, this is where you can have multiple Stream Decks. So I also have a small Stream Deck with only six buttons. So I have this program for something different because the producer is using this to initiate certain tasks, whereas I'm using my larger one to initiate other tasks. 
As you can see, here's another page. I have another page icon, and this goes to different sound effects, fart, record scratch, I'm not sure what these are. And if I wanna create a folder, I'm just gonna right click on a square, go create folder. This folder can be called SFX for sound effects. And then once I have the folder created, I can just drag these into the folder and put them in place. And if I want to add an action, I've got a couple blank spaces as you can see here. Let's go ahead and add something. So let's add in a source. I'm gonna title this one video, right? Now, as you see, it's got the text going live on the buttons as I'm changing this text here. And I can go ahead and I can make this text smaller, bigger, change the position of the text in the screen. You can even change the font if you want, right? Now that I have it named, I'm gonna select the scene. So I'm gonna use my camera bottom right scene because that's where I use most of my media. And then I'm gonna pick my source. Here's all the different pieces of media I have loaded in here. Let's go ahead and say CFX video. And then keep in mind with this media asset, this button is going to act as an on or off. So if the media is turned off, this button will turn the media on, start playing it. And if it's already playing, you can press this button to turn it off. Let's take a quick look at a multi-action switch. These are a little more complex here, but I wanna show you what you can do. So we go to our smoked mega globe. So as you see, it has a one and a two. So the one is going to be the on, and then the two is going to be the off, right? It's a switch, so you can really make them however you kind of want. And you're simply going to either have this set to activate or deactivate. And that's usually gonna determine if you can it an on or an off. And then number two, this is gonna be the kind of off, this is gonna turn it back to our normal settings. So we're gonna be activating our standard background, deactivating the intro countdown, deactivating the segment timer, and then multiple other things in the other scene as well. Finally, let's imagine I've got a new button here, and this is just the plain icon. I don't really like this one here. It's really easy to switch icons. As you see, I have a couple created here. You can do this directly on their website, or if you have a 280 by 280 pixel document, you can also do PNG files like that. That's what I do, it's way easier. I'm just gonna drag that on. And then as you can see, the button goes in place right on the Stream Deck immediately, which I just love. I think it's so cool. Now I wanna go ahead and open OBS itself so you can see when I press certain buttons what it's gonna actually initiate on OBS. So as you see, I'm now in OBS. It's kind of weird, a little bit meta here. You can see me and I'm in there, but anyway, so I wanna show you just kind of one at a time how I have this all set up when I press the buttons, what they do. So we're gonna start with this one. This goes between my two main scenes. I switch between these two main camera angles when I'm showing different things. If I wanna show details about something, I'm in this angle here. And if I wanna show me, maybe I'm showing something in my hands nice and close up, then I go to this angle. And this button here is gonna to toggle in between the two of them. Now this one here, this turns my mic off. And now you can hear me. So this is just a good one to have. It's a toggle switch, turn that mic on or off. Take a look down here when I press this button again here, it's going to mute this microphone. And then as you can see, it turns the microphone back on when I press the button again. This one here, little like and subscribe. And if you aren't like and subscribe to this channel already, please go ahead and do so, I'd really appreciate it. So I wanna show you some multi-action switches here. And these ones definitely took me the longest time to kind of program and figure out. But once you do it, it's really not that hard, but you just gotta get your hands dirty. Just gotta get in there and start doing stuff. So when I wanna do the different chapters of my live stream here, I'm gonna first press my first chapter. That's going to go ahead and initiate this graphic to make this highlighted. It starts the segment timer here. And as you see, when I go to my other camera angle, it also does the same thing here. Starts the chapter here, starts the segment timer here. And these are all independent things. You have to independently program each of these things. If I wanna go ahead and stop my video here because I wanna show my picture slideshow, press that button, video is gonna stop. Now I have my picture slideshow, go back and forth, show the different elements there. And whenever I'm done this chapter here, I decided, okay, that's enough there, time to move to the next chapter. Press that button again, and that's going to disengage all of those assets. So now when I'm ready, I'm gonna to go to my chapter two here, XMAX V3 Pro, and as you can see, does that same sort of thing. But when we go to our small cam here, this now initiates the media for the next chapter, right? So I can go ahead and scroll through all of this here. So as you see, it's quite automated as to what I need to do here to put my live stream presentation together. Go ahead and turn that off. And I can even start these from this other scene. I can initiate my next chapter if I want. You see for this one, it has a video. So this video element started playing automatically. I can go back and forth, see myself on this angle here, go back to this one. 
let's stop that and let's just go to the final. Let's say we want to skip a chapter here, go to our final chapter, our open Q&A starts our segment timer again. So as you can see, it's really not that complex when you get into the mechanics of how you do it, but what I'm able to do in terms of the production that I can put on, and we just simply wouldn't be able to do it as seamlessly if we didn't have the Stream Deck. The Elgato Stream Deck Mark II is an incredibly versatile piece of equipment that is going to be useful for anybody doing live streaming. It allows you to dramatically enhance the production quality of your stream, and it's designed so that you can be your own producer and trigger all of these actions yourself. When you're first learning the Stream Deck, and especially the software, it's going to be a little bit tricky at first, especially with multiple action switches, but if you have any kind of a background in computer programming, I'm sure it'll be super easy. For me though, it did take a couple sessions, just a couple hours here and there, before I really got a handle on it, and then once you do, it's just smooth sailing and the sky's the limit. Even if you don't do live streaming though, you're able to implement this tool in a variety of manners. And the crazy thing is how far this now goes beyond live streaming. It can help you with your gaming, smart home control, video and photo editing, even running business applications for those with more traditional jobs. The price on it is quite reasonable and I think it's worth every penny. I couldn't imagine doing my live streams without having this home base workstation that does everything I need it to do and way more. One day I would love to see them release a Mark III that doubles the resolution on these little buttons, but as it stands now, it's still pretty good resolution and I don't have a tough time seeing it. If you're looking to grab a Stream Deck, we have affiliate links down below. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase it, but it just gives us a small commission if you purchase it through the link. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this review on the Elgato Stream Deck Mark II, and stay tuned for another review coming soon.